everybody, welcome to the Great Disruptor Podcast, episode two. Here today with Mark Miller. What's welcome, up? Welcome How are the, you? Welcome to the East Aurora Mountains, the ranch. <laughs> Thank you for taking the ride out. Now, you make music, you book shows, you make and sell board games, you have a video game store. Cambridge Dictionary defines a disruptor as a person or thing that prevents something, especially a system, process, or event from continuing as usual or as expected. Buffalo, New York, one of our boldest, most outspoken forces for good of the last 10 to 15 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Miller. Mark, thank you for being here, thank you for your time. Thank you for being unapologetically you. I could call you a hip hop act, I could call you an alternative act, but you reach to and appeal to all the pockets in between that. And I think labeling you a genre does you a disservice and may put you in a box. So in your own words, how would you describe the music you make? Uh, misfit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm just unorthodox. That's maybe that's the best way to describe it. I'm just different, you know, and, uh, you know, different is good. Different is good. I was going to say that. Where I'd like to start, speaking of disruptors, let's talk about your protest to Spotify. Is, is protest the right word? I, I wouldn't say protest because I don't, I don't hate Spotify um, or anything. It's uh, in terms of Spotify, um, I just have a different approach. And um, what I've noticed from like over the years, like we used to have like, think of it about it like this, like before like Napster and all that, we had our organic CDs and music and everything. We would put it out there. People would be hungry because they, they were just hungry to go and get stuff, right? They just wanted things. So they people would just go to shows just because they wanted to go to a show. They were excited to hear something new. And um, I think the thing is, is that because like we had Napster and whatever, at the beginning of it, it was like, it was awesome. Like people were grabbing new music or whatever. Sales were going up for everybody. Things were great. But then, you know, we had, um, if you want to say protest, protest kind of came from uh, Lars from Metallica and all that. I remember and that. And the thing was, is there was such a hit on like MP3s and stuff. There was a, there was a site called MP3.com. And MP3.com is where I would put in, um, I would put in like, uh, names of bands, like any any band, any hip hop act, any whatever, and it wouldn't give me the hip hop act or band of like the big band, like if I put in um, Pantera, I wouldn't get the like Pantera on there. I would find bands that are regular bands or whomever, just making music and putting it, and that that was like the thing for me. I was like. Oh my God, I'm meeting, I'm, I'm looking, I'm listening to all these, these new musics. And then what I would do, cause I, I would, I'm just a fan of music. Like I was a fan of like discovery. That's the right, big thing. Like, right, right. um, we, I was able to find and discover acts that way. But now what you have is because everything, that site got nixed when they, they were like, it was the war on MP3, the war on everything. That that site got nixed. Every they got terrified. Is was everybody was terrified of the lawsuit. And you know how it goes. Like now, everybody nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yeah. Everything is share music. They lost that battle. Right. But the thing is now, it's all it's all streams, whatever. Because like, you can download something, but people. It, I'm not saying Lars is right. So know that. But the thing is, is that like, you don't want to devalue yourself where you want to go and sell your product. So people have to stay hungry to buy your product. Yeah. So I, I have a thing like, okay, I'll put out a couple songs here and there and I'll do it off like my band camp or whatever. Right. Spotify. Here's the thing of like, I'm not, I'm not anti Spotify, but if I'm going to go put something on Spotify, I don't find it, where if I'm going to pay money to, to be up on Spotify, they used to do it with Reverb Nation and everything. Right, I remember you, you know, there. They were like, 
they were doing all that stuff. They were trying to do like the radio stations and stuff like that. They were trying to do that. Yeah. Spotify is just the thing now. It's the it's like well, Kickstarter. It's the I, thing to go I to. I think one one major shift that happened when you talk about something like a Reverb Nation, it wasn't mobile yet. That too. So you could have it. Yes. You, you could play it and not still not have it downloaded or owned it, and yeah. you'd have to be stationary. You'd yes. Have to be where your computer was. Um, for the most part, but yeah. now with everything coming off the phone, yep. you take it with you anyway. Phones are baby computers exactly. anyway. Exactly. So yeah, but the thing is, it's like it's not. I I if I give somebody a taste of something and they want more and they buy it, that's a fan. Yeah. That's a fan. Right. That's what you want. You want fans, and you, you, people can go like put things on in the background of, of music and whatever too. It's like, you know, you can ask somebody. When was the last time you actually bought an album, or you actually bought a whatever? And they'll probably be like, question. "Ah, I don't know, whatever." Like people aren't going to a lot of you know used CD stores and buying stuff a lot. So like the, the last that that's a great question, a fun question. I bought vinyls for the sake of hanging them on my walls. Yes, but not not even opened out of the package. Like I'm talking like uh, thirty six chambers. Nirvana unplugged in New York, yep. like those types of vinyls, and I I framed them and put them in my studio that I used to have. But an actual compact disc, yeah, I'm talking 2008, nine, yep, yeah. And record stores, they're only doing vinyl. Um, I shouldn't say they're only doing vinyl. Record stores are mostly media of vinyl, and then some of CDs. Some have stopped doing CDs. And then they're they're definitely not doing how I released a new well, you album. Can't even, it, you'd be hard pressed to find a CD player at this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, you even even in cars. Have. Yeah, right. Even right. cars, they want to do it. Right. Like, I mean, my my car my car's got a tape player. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got a I got a was it ninety six? I got a ninety six. I don't care. It gets good gas mileage. You know that 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 tour go on tour with that. Who yeah. cares? Oh you know? man, old faithful. Yeah, dude, it's great because it, hey, you you get rid of those those uh, all the the censor checks of uh, New York, and it's like wow. eh, oh hey, I, I passed the test, right? You know. Yeah. So so is this? Now we we can agree it's not a protest, but is this disagreement specific to Spotify, or is it all platforms? And is, is it just because Spotify is the big fish at this point? They're just. That's just the the big fish. There's like right. TuneCore, right? And there's one more. I, I can't remember what the other one is. There's, I mean, Apple Music is probably its number two. I think that's Pandora, the other one. Et yeah, cetera, stuff like that. Pan, Pandora is uh, a little Amazon Music. Pandora is a little different though, because Pandora you could, if you were to get your stuff on there, basically, you, that's a radio station, essentially. Right. Yeah. That's so. I mean, you can say that Spotify is a radio station. They can act as one, sure. They try to be. Yeah. But, like, Pandora is, like, you just switch the channel. It's, like, going to Blondie Music. It's more, going to whatever. It's more artist-based and what's similar to this artist than it is specific song. Like right. Like the rest of the platforms. Right. right. So, yeah. like, that used to be that used to be the thing. You know what else it used, used to be free? Yeah, that's, that's that, that, that that's that. what that's why yeah. though. Yeah. That's why because everybody wants free. Can't blame them. Nobody right. wants to pay for anything. But yeah. the thing is, is like instead of just going and you know paying, you know like oh we, I don't want to pay for anything. It's like here's your taste. Here's that's like if you look on on like my site, I've got like uh, the site for the the band camp anyway. It's like oh here's uh, you know this track off this album. The, the singles, right? Right. That's what they always used to do on the radio anyway. Here's popped out a couple singles and then go buy the album. Yeah. So that is the old model. Fans are going to go and buy it if they want it, you know, yeah. and that's just kind of it. And um, my, my feeling is that I don't want to give away the farm and I could just go and put the singles on there too. But I don't think the singles are going to carry just the weight of everything when people are going to, you know, it's like, I need, you need 10 singles on a thing to really be like, you know, to make it feel like an album. So people are like constantly listening and then yeah. do a thing. At least that's my, my take on it. I'm pro I, I can be wrong. You know, and I don't, you know, Hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I think, I think it's a different answer for every artist. Right? Yeah. But I, but I do 
in my opinion, I do think attention spans have shrunk as a yeah. result of being in the social media TikTok era. And I do, th I mean, the, my last projects, and like you said, I'm not trying to speak for anybody else, but right. my last projects, I'm in the five track, the seven track space. But as the artist, that comes down to lots of things. It just comes down to it's less expensive to make five songs than it is 10 songs. Absolutely. It's five less beats, five <clears throat> less mixes, five less masters. Um, so yeah, it's an affordability thing, but I also think it matches the attention span because uh, a, a, a release like that, you can play through it in 20, 25 minutes. Right. So it's a ride to work. You can play this top to bottom, yeah. you know? And then I, I do think those tracks could potentially do more numbers because right. instead of playing 10 tracks once, you can play five tracks twice, Yeah. Uh, for, for example. So yeah, I think yeah, I don't think there's a blanketed answer there. But uh, My biggest argument about Spotify is this, is everybody's like, you got to get on it. You got to get on it. And my biggest argument is because they always say, oh, this is how many plays you get or whatever. Yeah. Um, my argument is how many more people have came to your shows? How many more albums have you sold? How much more? It's you know what we're in we're in the music business, right? It's there's money. We can we can say like we do this for the art. Well, we also need to do it so we can live and make so more music and art, do yeah. things. But the thing is, like at the end of the day, you're paying them on the hope of just getting your stuff out there. And even though there was numbers, you could say, like, oh, I get I get. 10,000 plays or whatever, but you don't get one extra person to your concerts. I think from what I've seen, YouTube seems to be the, I'm not saying it's good or like uh, right. livable, but I, I think of all the platforms, YouTube seems to have the best pay model. Um, but like we were talking about earlier, you got to jump through X amount of hoops. Oh yeah. You got to really be established before yeah. they'll pay you. But if you can establish yourself, yeah, I think they pay probably better than any other platform. Um, but, I mean, you've, you've done more and been more creative than anyone I've seen in working around this new age system of digital distribution. So, your, your stage show and performance is not like anything I've ever seen. It's truly performance art, a full interpretation of the music that goes with it. So what or who inspired the stage show? And I, I know you got the arm, the glove on. So you're it's right you're, here. He's in character right here, baby. Right now. He's in the gimmick. So what? What or who inspired the stage show? I'm just nuts. Like, <laughs> it, like it's really it. Like I have fun. Everybody's so you know, like everybody's so serious on stage and whatever. And it's like I, I give people dinosaur hats. <laughs> and I'm and I always say like I, I'm like become one of the cool kids you know yeah. like Billy Madison you're, it's not cool until you pee your pants I say that every time on yeah, stage I just said that today yeah it, it's when like I pee yeah myself exactly sometimes you gotta pee yourself it, it's like a reality check <laughs> anyway but but no the thing is like I have it, it it's just fun and people people. I feel like everything's gotten so serious. Just take a step back. Yeah. Take a step back. Like, enjoy. Enjoy what's there. We. It's not to just be like, oh, well, that's childlike or whatever. It's just like, when are you going to go out and actually do something kind of whatever? Like, I don't give a, a fuck if you're a thuggy dude or whatever. Put on a fucking dinosaur hat and do the raptor mosh. It's like a horrible version of the, thr of the thriller dance. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's having a good time. We roar, dude. Like, you know what? That when I see people do that, there's a, there's a bunch of people that do that too at the shows. They go they go nuts. I had to, I had to order. I ran out of, of dinosaur hats so much, and I'm like, try, I was like fiending to try and get these done, uh, like get them out there, like so I could have them for a stage show. I spend money on on these right. things. Like, it's not cheap. But it adds so much to the show. It's not just like, oh, here's lighting and whatever. You know? My first my first album release, I tried I tried to figure out anything I could go in and figure out. I had a, a giant, you know, lion dragon that would go in the Chinese parades walking through the crowd and whatever, come up on stage and zip on out. Everybody's like, what the fuck just happened? That's what you want. Yeah. You want a show. I mean, you leave there and remember that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You um, want a show. 
that's that's what it's all about. So do you, do you get nervous when you perform at all, or are you comfortable, or a little bit of both? Very once in a blue moon. Yeah. Once in a blue moon, and it's 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 when I have to cram song lyrics in to try and make sure I can sure. really try and make some or once in a while if there's a certain person or crowd or whatever that I want to do really good for and I don't want to fuck it up that I'm like I really don't want to fuck this up but usually by after the first song I'm pretty good on that right. but I'm never usually nervous never I remember being the first show I ever played Broadway Joe's I mm -hmm. think it's been transitioned to something else now. I don't even think it's a performance venue. It's like a, a weed thing? Not a weed thing, a glass? A, I thought it was a mechanic, but I could be wrong. It's I have like no a glass. I think it's like a glass shop or gotcha. something. Gotcha. Yeah. Call, like glass, like auto? No, glass, like, like, like pot. pot. Gotcha. Pot. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. I think it's that. I think. I, I At least that's what I thought sure. I saw last. There's one of those in every corner. Yeah, so. I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but I remember the first show I ever played was there. Um, and... I, and this ties into like how, why you, why not me specifically, but why we see so many overdoses, deaths in, in the entertainment industry, I think. And it, it was, I was just so anxious and nervous to play mm -hmm. that I got rip roaring drunk beforehand. Oh, to wow. Ease, okay. To ease the nerves. And it wasn't the only time. And then as I continued and played shows, like I would always have to have drinks before. Got and it. I don't know that it helps at all, but I mean, to me, you know, it took the Fucks me up, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that is no it, good for me. Probably, yeah, I was going to say, it probably does nothing to enhance my performance, probably even decreases it. But I was anxious to the point that I was drinking. Mm -hmm. And then I got to a point where it was like, why am I doing this to myself? And, and then a lot of times, like the rewards, the fruits of playing, mm -hmm. like it was like, I didn't really gain anything off this and that's i'm not saying it's a fault in the system i'm saying that's a me thing i yeah. didn't really gain what i wanted to or needed to or should and it's like well i'm getting drunk to go play this show i'm spending all this time leading up to it to prep myself to learn these words in and out to yeah. get the performance mixes and yeah i just got to a point where it was like why why am i doing this and <clears throat> i think uh i think there's two different types of artists and then you also have the hybrid but i think there's the live show artist, yeah, and then there's the studio artist. There's, yeah, there's two different artists, you know, and then of course, you know, you have the the category that's the hybrid that's good at both, likes both. But yeah, it was a lot of nervous energy for me. I think, like you said, once I got on stage and started going, it goes away. Yeah, but uh, I think what you said earlier is is huge, man. I, especially right now in the current climate of cancel culture and everything's so serious. Like just having fun. Yeah. And uh, letting go of the expectation and just enjoying yourself, like, I mean, as as oversaturated as music is, it's still how many people are getting on stage and getting to perform music they made yeah. to how if it be in one person, you know, <clears throat> it's yeah, I think, I mean, I guess speaking more to myself now, but I wasn't grounded in gratitude mm -hmm. like I should have been, and just enjoying the moment. Did I, you have fun though? I, it was fun when done with my friends who made music when mm -hmm. the audience was into it and was there and right. was active. So I would say stage show over show, it varied. Right. Some of them were like, this was a waste of time. Some yeah. of them were like, I was bitter because the booker could have done something differently. Yep. Uh, or one of the, like, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen this, like the artist doesn't show or the artist doesn't sound check or they're just, you know. Yep. So yeah, I think, uh, I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm not saying I would never do it again. I'm just saying, I don't think my head was centered in gratitude. And I think that's where, for me anyway, personally, it should have been. Right. And it wasn't. Um, do, do you ever worry, we talked about your performance, I've seen you perform. Do you ever worry that it's too much? Like the average passerby, this could turn them off because it's so in your face or... Are you like the pro wrestling where it's like, if they get it, they get it. If they don't fuck them, they're never going to get it. I have never felt, uh, in a certain degree. Um, I have never felt really part of a scene. Domestic, so like you said. yeah, I'm you know, for your own like, I, I feel that. 
the people that do put on, like say they'll put on the, the Raptor hat or whatever, or they'll, they'll watch whatever. Um, I have no real audience. I have an audience, we'll call it that. But my audience is so different that I have funny songs, then I have ultra lyrical, crazy, whatever. Um, all like a song that's like very street, you know, gritty. Sure. And then whatever. But because I have those different things, there's good and bad about it. It's good because I can be versatile. I can go into, I, I can play a show with Wu Tang dudes. But then like, I'll go and I'll, I'll play a show that's a nerd show, that's nerdcore. And I'll be like, all right, this song's about Mike Tyson's punch out. You know? So. Great game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. That's the next album. Anyway. <laughs> nice. But, but, uh, but the thing is, is like, I don't feel like I'm kind of part of anything. So I'm just kind of like, you know, if they like it, they like it. But what I do hope for is everybody does get into it because the more energy that people are shooting off, the more I'm, I'm push. I'm still going to push hard anyway. Right. But don't get me wrong. There, I like, I would go on tour and I would hit some of these places and it was awesome. I hit like a, a, a couple of venues that it was bomb. Ridiculous. Like, I'm like, this is, this sucks. It's for like one certain thing or another. Sure. But, you know, I, I remember the, when I played, I played, it was off my, um, my quest to the Midwest tour. Buffalo was the worst show on the whole tour. The irony. It, dude. Home court it was, was the worst court. terrible. It was terrible. Why, it well, made, why do you say terrible? There yeah. was, I remember like the axe played and some of the acts like, they, they, no one stuck around for me. I remember there was the bartender, the sound guy, and the bartender's friend talking to him at the end of the bar, and then the door person. Yeah. And it was like, like I, when I played, there were people there, and then they left because it was, it was, it, it was a, I want to say it was a Sunday. I yeah. want to say it was a Sunday because I did like Erie PA or whatever the day before. This was like far time back. This is like, I forget how many years ago now. But the thing is, is that you, when I went to Buffalo, there was nothing. So like the energy, I was just like, I don't know if I really want to do play Buffalo. That is and, a, a very common <clears throat> thing that Buffalo artists say is like, there's, and it does sound like I am being pessimistic towards the Buffalo scene. Yeah. It does always come down to, you know, more or less can the artist create the draw, but more often than not, I, I think artists here say that there is not a scene to play to in Buffalo. Yeah. Um, there are, I mean, there are artists that are going to draw that I could think of, but they're huge, they're, you know, major label deals. Um, and I think you have to limit it. I think it becomes, if you play every few weeks mm -hmm. or even once a month, it just becomes, well, why go to this one when I can see in a couple weeks at that one? So I do think you need to give them the gift of missing you. So yes and no. Yes and no. And the, I think that if you are, you have those acts that they're just happy to go and play. I, I actually did a test to what you're saying. Yeah. And my, my test was something, if you look up on my YouTube, you can find the commercial for it. It's hilarious. Okay. Um, it, uh, it was called, uh, this is Buffalo tour. I dressed up like Leonidas from Awesome. From, 300? from from three hundred, awesome. and I had a Nintendo controller as like my, <laughs> my like thing that you. holds my yeah. It was <laughs> it was like I was like this is Buffalo, nah, it, whatever. It was on. it was ridiculous. Yeah. Nah. So basically, what what that what that tour was, I played eight different venues around Buffalo right. every day of the week. When you say Buffalo, you're talking. Towns. Towns. West, like, you're talking Western. Yes. Yeah, West, well, yeah. Buffalo area. Right. Okay. Buffalo area. So I played like, um, it was because Mohawk wasn't around. I played Electric Avenue. I played, um, like 
uh, when the forum was around. I yep. did there. I did. Um, I've probably played the forum more than any other venue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's not. It's not open anymore, right? No. Yeah. No. Okay. So I played the forum. Then I played um, Dome Stadium, which was is now gone in in uh, Tonawanda. Then I I played um, it was some place in Hamburg. I don't even remember where that was. It was. Sure. It was out like like I don't know. It was near near the plaza. Okay. It was near there. But there was like all these different different places, like places that were like no one would think about doing. I played um, what was it? Uh, shenanigans or whatever it was that was like right next to the Firestone at Sheridan in 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 uh, in Niagara Falls I Boulevard. Okay, yep. Dude, like no one would play there. Guess what? Like this tour, this this thing, my theory was I'm not getting a, a ton of people to go and discover me. I, I do, but I don't. Like, they'll come out random, and I have friends. Mm -hmm. But all my friends are like, oh, yeah, I, I can't come out, whatever, or I can't do this, or whatever. So I'm like, well, screw it. I'm going to go, and I'm going to play every day, and I'm going to see how this was. Dude, it was the best freaking thing I ever did. Really? Why, I, why do you say that? Because I took other acts, like Polmar was was on like a couple. I put him on a couple shows. I put like certain bands on different shows, whatever. And every show was free, yeah. free to come in. And it was awesome because okay. certain people started coming to a couple other just come different shows just to just to come out, hang out, whatever, because it's free. Yeah. But it was basically like I don't care what we get what we get paid, but if we do good, give us something. That's why some of the bars were kind of assholes. And yeah. some were, were good. Some yeah. did pay us good good money. Yeah. But the thing was is that like I gained fans at each place because people are gonna go keep their watering hole as their watering hole. Yeah. Some people only just really want to go to Mohawk Place. Some people only just want to go to like maybe a show place theater like back in the day or like whatever. They're gonna gravitate towards their little their spots or whatever. And you know, if you hit the regulars, you hit the regulars. But guess what? I'm selling merch. Um I, I was selling merch, baby. Yeah. It was it was cool. So it's like, does it matter? Depends. Because you're either going to... I always say bands... I, I ask bands this question when they play for you. I'm like, do you want to play for fun? Do you want to play just to be the biggest band in Buffalo? Because you get these these bands that are like, they don't fuck it too well. I think this is an awesome question. That for you to ask, or for any booker to ask yeah. and ask, you know, <clears throat> what is your goal here? Yeah, because I'm like, do you do you want to be the biggest band in Buffalo? Do, or do you want to just be the weakest? Because a lot of bands now are older. There's not yeah. there's there's yeah. there's some young bands especially, starting now, especially the ones playing <clears throat> where like there's a ton of people, like the uh, beer tents, for example. Yeah, I think that's a great example. So all these summer beer tents in Buffalo, all these churches have their little festivals. Yep. And the weekend is booked, and then you see on Facebook them promoting. You see the band picture. Yeah, it's like all my friends' dads. <laughs> you know well, I mean? <laughs> you're talking the the tribute and cover acts. Sure, yeah, totally different kind of the thing. The rock and roll cover band scene. Yeah. yeah, that scene they want to play as much as possible so they can go and make the money because that's where money, they're yeah. at. Right. When it comes to the original people, you know, we're not getting. We're getting table scraps. It's ironic. We can't get nothing. <laughs> people playing other people's music. Yeah. There's there's a market. Yeah. And when you make your own music. Oh yeah. But I think it does. It does. You touched on this a little bit earlier when you mentioned somebody else turning people onto your music. For example, it, I think a huge part of it is influence. <clears throat> so I can have the same. I can have this the same song, if I show it to you. You're a lot less likely to listen to it than if, say, Janice Snyder plays it on Kiss and tells you to listen to it. Right. All of a sudden, you think that song is right. way better. It's yeah. the same song. Yeah. It just, you, it sounds kind of insulting, but the general public has been programmed to right. listen to what they're told to listen to. People don't want to be advertised to by a commercial or a, hey, do this. It's just got to be in your face. There it is. You're going to listen to whatever, and if they like it, they're like, or they'll they'll turn it off in spite. You 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 talked about when you're performing and having fun, how you have different songs that can appeal to different people. Mm -hmm. How it can range from funny to lyrical, etc. When you're writing, 
mm -hmm. and we're at the ground level of it's not even a song yet. In your head, are you saying to yourself, today I'm going to make a funny song? Or do you think to yourself, there's an audience for, say, for example, nerdcore rap? Should right. I make one of those to appeal to that audience? Or is it whatever you're inspired for in the moment? Do, do you pick, I guess I'm saying, do you pick yeah. where you want to go or does it just happen? It kind of is more just happen. I mean, yeah. the biggest song I have is Never Say Never. Um, probably. Probably. I mean, Happy Birthdays. But I don't know. There's a bunch of whatever. I don't know what you can call hits because, you know, I'm not right. like, I'm not on. on not Billboard. Yeah, right? Billboard, whatever. Right. But the thing is, is like, Let's say I know that from the amount of it, Never Say Never is huge. It came out with the music video. It was only made for YouTube. That's the only way you can find it. Yeah. All that, which once again, like we were saying about the Spotify's and whatever, it's like you have to go here to find it kind yeah. of thing. So that was that was a big marketing thing that way. But anyway, um, that song... <laughs> That song was written in, I don't know, three hours? Right. And it, maximum, I don't know, whatever. And it was like, if you listen to the lyrics on it, it's like, dude, this is like wild. This yeah. is wild stuff. Like, really good lyricism in there. And it's like, I can, I can toot my horn on that and say like, yeah, I did really good. Then there's other songs I'm like, oh God. <laughs> How am I going to get this done? I don't know what I'm, I'm, I feel like doing. And I don't want to be like a topic rapper. Like, um, I sure. say topic rapper like um, Tom McDonald, yeah. right? Yep. The dude's like, all right, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about that. I felt like... I even, think he very heavily plays to where attention is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I get it. Bad, yeah, right. Like, I I'm get it. Strategies clearly worked for him. Right. It's not for everybody. For right. Sure. I'm not, I'm not saying he's, he's shit. Sure. I, I'm not a fan of him, but I'm, sure. uh, you know, it's whatever, yeah. you know, I don't hate on him. Sure. The thing is, is that like, you've got like, I don't know. You're just, you're just basically, I don't have a specific topic that I'm like looking for. I kind of felt like, Bands did that in the 90s. Like, I don't know, corn and things like that. I kind of felt like... Love right, some corn. I, had, I had the CDs, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it was like, did you ever feel like... Still listen to them at the like, gym, matter of fact. Certain bands, though, they had like, all right, we're going to have this song about, like, like say, Papa Roach. Like, the, the self-hurt stuff. Last and Resort? The, yeah, Last oh, Resort. It was a banger. Yeah, things like that. You'd have, like, a lot of certain... But you'd have a... They, they usually were... Because it would play to, like, back then, that was big, big issues. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, they would, there would be certain things that would be said. And then there's also that formula of, like, you know, you get into these albums, like, I mean, hell, look at the... I had that album. Um, I seen, a, I, I'm, I'm very into the behind the scenes of mm -hmm. how music is created. My YouTube search bar is filled with rappers in the studio, the yeah. making of this and that song. I seen where Last Resort stemmed from. Okay. And it was, he doesn't play the piano in the band. He might be the guitar player okay. or the bass player, but it started as him just riffing on the piano. Sure. And it was, da -da 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 -da. it sounded yep. beautiful. It sounded ambient and beautiful. Yeah. And then they turned it into this Rock, suicide rocking. anthem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sometimes crazy. it's just that way. I mean, yeah. Hey man, they made lots of money off that. Yeah, of so I mean, still, hey. still can tour today off that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Incredible. Yeah, um, I think cre creation of songs um, for me, the best songs I've made are the easiest songs I've made. Mm -hmm. You talked about how you put a song together in X amount of time. The best verses I've written, like I don't. I don't sit, I don't have like uh, I'm not like Eminem where I have a rhyme book of verses pre ready. Oh, okay. Um, I am the guy. He has that. Where, I didn't even know he had that. Yeah. Um, oh, I don't. I never use it. I do think it's a good exercise, right? Like to to continuously be writing verses, even if you don't have a song form, just to keep your pen sharp. But for me, I like to play through beats. Mm -hmm. I don't have a I don't have a certain type of mind. I'm not like I'm looking for West Coast, East Coast, sure. old school. I'm not looking for any of that. I'm just looking for what. When I start, when I hit play, yeah. it's a few seconds in, and my mind starts singing a hook. 
Yeah. Start oh, yeah. Writing lines. Sometimes you just get inspired. That's where I land. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it's that with. way for me. Sometimes I, I'm coming up with lyrics, yeah. and then I do a beat right, or something, right. you know, or might have a hook in mind or something like that. So yeah, like and, and just get I, inspired. And when I get stuck, I don't force it. I don't. Right. What I do when I get stuck, say there's three verses and I got two, I'm not gonna force a third. That's when I go and find a feature. Yeah. And I go to them with. I'm, I'm stuck here. This spot's open. Can you fill this in for me? I, I don't ahead sure. of time hear a beat or see a person and think, I need that person on this kind of beat. I think I'm stuck here. Who would sound good there that I have access to? Yeah. And that's that's how I create. But, yeah, I think the, the best stuff comes to you and just kind of, you're just kind of the medium. It just comes out of the ether, yep. flows through you and into your pen and becomes a song it's it's crazy really it's kind of funny how you say about like a, a feature because like um when i do collabs with people so people ask me to do a collab with them sure and um or a feature or whatever um <laughs> on the collabs um some of these these collabs like there's there's people that like they're they have a certain skill level and um the, there's some people that are, let's say there's, there's, I noticed that the, a lot of newer rappers don't have the vocabulary. Sure. Um, and that's just, could be them green, you know, it's not like, you know, we all grow. It's also a generational gap. That too, that if too, someone's yes. 20 versus someone that's 40, they've yeah. grown up on two different types of hip hop. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so their expect, somebody that grew up on uh, Lil Uzi yeah. doesn't have the same idea for what a song sounds like as somebody that grew up on, say, Nas, for example. Yeah. You know? So yeah. in, in their eyes, they're like, oh, this is the most fire shit I ever made. And to one of, to you, it could be like, this is trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And vice versa, too. Because, yeah. like, yes. it's. I was actually saying to somebody the other day that you need to find, in this day and age, you need to find that sweet spot. Because if you're too dumbed down, it's just, you're just going off of the producer. And then... um if you are too lyrical, they're like, they don't care. They don't, they don't want to hear, you know, some cool lyric. They want to hear like, I party, I drink, I fuck. Let's, let's do <laughs> it again tonight. Yeah. That's the, Sounds like a number one. Ready? That's it. I drink, I fuck, I party, let's get yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. I drink, I fuck, let's party, let's get oh, it up. Bing, radio, bing, radio. Viagra, Viagra, Viagra. <laughs> Radio ready. Radio That's ready. the track. It's called Viagra. I'm like Viagra. I party. I drink. I fuck my skin it up. Like, hey. That's what the fuck, dude. That's so dumb. But there you go. There nice, you go. Nice. I think uh, I, I meant to say this earlier. I, I think when we were on the topic of uh, streaming and whatnot, it has created the challenge of, you know, you used to be able to sell cds 5 10 15 bucks a pop mm -hmm. and that was in your music was your money yeah and now it's become music is your brand yeah how are you going to make money so the the music could be your lane what you're doing but there's the money isn't there like it used to be yeah so now where is my merch line my show money my fill in the blank it really anything but music pays yeah. for music <clears throat> is and it, it's kind of the upside down right um, I, I've got lots of questions for you still, but I wanted to stop, yeah. I wanted to yeah. stop here just to tell you what's happening right now. I'm really enjoying, and this is the reason I started this podcast. Yeah. You're only the second guest, but to have you here and have this conversation, uh, I'm really enjoying it. I really appreciate you. And this is the reason I put this together. Yeah. I wanted, you know, I think kind of on the back of streaming, like technology has changed the human connection so much yep. to be face to face with somebody and be able to, to to have this conversation not only that but for anybody listening you know how do i book a show where do i start or how do where is money and music like all these things that yeah. they may be wondering um i'd like to think that we can help check some of those boxes provide some education provide some value so just just a midway point thank you mr mark Miller. that no problem yeah. i will say this that I, um I was thinking before, because I've done it, of like giving like a, like a seminar or something on cool. like how to, how to do a tour or how to do whatever. Yeah. 
but the way that I do it is very different sure. for me. Yeah. And I'm, I've got a, I've got like a, I don't see like a hand up, but it's when I do a tour, this can go be for anybody. What I do is, um, first things first, you could do show trades with people and be like, I'll get oh, you over. Like I made it. I made a thing. You can look it up on on Facebook, and and it's it's a thing. But I I didn't use it for a while because of COVID. Sure. And now I'm gonna build it up. I've got a I got a Discord. I'm starting to do with it too. But it's called the the Show Touring Network. And what we did is like there was like me, my buddy uh, Nate Eliminate out of like um. I played with him on one of your shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dude out of Nashville. Okay. Um, like for him, I would be like. Hey, dude, I'll give you a hundred bucks, whatever day you need. Just let me know what you got on tour. I just need it for the same when I go down there. That's it. Yeah. It might seem like passing the buck, but the idea is to go and like promote a show. If you win on the show, you make money, you cover or whatever, like you're going to get a hundred bucks and that's gas money. Keep on going and doing whatever you got to go and do. Um, the smart sense is how you spend your money on tour. That's another thing. There's people that they get all the hotel rooms and they do this and that. And it's like, sometimes you don't, you don't. Yeah. Being a one, one person act, it's a lot easier. Well, yeah. Being a multiple. Five ways, oh, right. dude. Yeah. It's a major, major act. Yeah. yeah. So the, the amount of money that it takes touring out is less. Because right. it doesn't fall on you, all right. of you, or, or right. on you, just you. But there is the other responsibility of, you know, there's the give and take of it. No. It's basically I, it. Yeah. I also, you know, I, I I went to the Chris Stapleton concert last week, and I was I was telling my girl this this same thing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The the less people, obviously, there's you know less money to split. But also, being an MC, we don't have to haul much gear. Right. Uh, typically, it's us and a beat or a DJ right. at most, right? So, yeah, that also unless yeah. you got a stage show of stuff, yeah, right, then, right. then, then you know, because like, here, dude, my little my little Toyota Tercel out there, like trying to fit in like my Space Invader suit for people <laughs> to jump in, and I'm like shoving the merch boxes in there yeah. to try and at least make some space, like. Yeah. Ah. Um. What's What's the best and or your favorite show you ever played as an artist, and why? Oh boy. Um best in favorite. So I mean That can be two different things. It, right? there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple there's a couple different things that stand because it was like when I was doing stuff doing the boss tribal stuff, because like um for those who don't know, like I had a I had a band called Boss Tribal. We were insane. Um just it was wild. Um playing certain shows with that was just ridiculous and i mean we would we would do insane stuff were you the but, front man oh yeah okay. oh yeah <laughs> i can't do anything how long ago was this 98 okay, 99 yeah. yeah this is this is i was 10 or 11 this, years old this is old <laughs> i wasn't at the bar now mcmd yeah. the one of the most memorable shows there is probably um I don't know what the most memorable but like like i said like one in Kearney, nebraska i remember that one a lot because like yeah. i was damn good not only was i damn good everybody was like holy shit this is awesome and i sold a shit ton of merch yeah. it was just like a, that was like perfect feeling show like i say perfect I show that. yeah i love that for you but let's say like the show I just played with with Mega Ran and Danimal Cannon and and uh, and uh, Worm Quartet, my my record release I just played. I was, I, I, it was a tight show. I felt it was awesome. Like it, that was a great show. Like watching the videos, like there's certain videos that are just like. I I, I see people like when they were I was doing the one with the man, the, the Raptor Mosh. I was doing that and, and stuff like that. That's, now, do, you, do you teach them? 
Oh yeah. You know what this is? The it, how to do it? Yeah, I'm just like people can't just show up and yeah, know yeah, this, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like everybody put out your little T Rex arms that we're gonna go ah, ah, whatever, right? <laughs> so so we do that. But like <clears throat> the thing is is that like that show is a memorable show because it's like, oh I'm playing with this national act. I'm put like I don't know if you know who Mega Ran is. Mega Ran's He's solid. Like he okay. does stuff with, with like um like Kevin Smith from Clerks and stuff. He okay. did he did the song awesome. he did the song of Clerks Three. He did that song Tractor Beam. Okay. And you know he he plays these giant nerd con conventions. Sure. It's it's awesome. There's an audience. There's an audience. Oh yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. It's good. So the thing is, is that like, you know, I'm playing I'm playing with him. He's a dude I really want to like get in line with of, of like you know work with there's there's other people i might want to try and work with like certain certain other acts or whatever it was just cool um so that was just a solid solid show i would say you're you're damn near as as notable as you are as an artist here you're as recognizable as a booker here that, I, I think that's fair to say mm -hmm. 10, 10 to 15 years maybe a booking maybe longer um how did how did you get into booking where does that story start so um i started booking in the year 2000 so we're talking I would 24 say. years yeah not 10 to 15 yeah yeah year 2000 I incorporated Sick Boy Productions, which is the company, still running it today, right. um, in 2005. I want to say it was like in May or something in 2005. Sure. So legit, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I started booking because I liked bands. I liked doing stuff. I had a lot of friends. And then... Um, you know, I wanted to get bigger. I wanted to do bigger things. I wanted to play bigger shows for my own band. I'm needy and greedy. That's really what it is. I'm needy and greedy. Like, I need to do this, and I'm greedy because I want to get things done for myself. So not, like, yeah. greedy, like, oh, my God, I need all the money. It's not that, but, like, yeah. get things done. Yeah, I, don't think that, I don't think that's even necessarily greed to... I mean, if you're not building your brand, who else is going to do it right. for you, right? Right, right. So, but it... it I haven't done as much stuff now because the climate has changed of things. There's yeah. probably people that have no idea that I book sure. anymore. Um, all of our friends, some of growing up, they moved away. They got wives, kids, jobs. Right, They're right. big paying. They don't, they'll, they'll do stuff here and there, but they don't care to do it anymore. You know, like it's not a career for them. Right. Um, it's not a thing. I, it's weird for me because I, I call I call my situation for it the perfect loser. <laughs> Which is I got no wife and kids and whatever, blah blah blah. So I'm I can, wondering where this is going. I can I can go wherever I want, you know, doing that. But the 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 thing is that was like um I've done some I've booked some giant shows. I've booked some shows that were shit. Me doing it from that time, it was just me trying to go and do things more and better. And I, I changed, I changed some things because there was like, I remember like people were, were, were doing ticket deals where they were only getting like two bucks a ticket, whatever, this and that. When I was like, fuck this, I'm going to give you half of whatever you bring in from a ticket or at the door. Because yep. I don't give a shit. If you're bringing in the people, yeah. fuck it. You're doing good. Why should I go and have it be where you are not getting, you know, something because, oh, you didn't go and sell a piece of paper? Yeah. Like, screw that shit. Yeah. And it's especially before they became digital. Like, that, that would right. just mean you'd have to drive and deliver it. Right. Which is just more expense. Right. And time. And the thing is now is you got, you got these fucking... Uh, I, I'm just going to say this the way it is. Anybody, don't don't ever go and make it be like you're investing in yourself because you're not. If you have to pay to be on a show, I don't care who it's by because 
your 15 minutes for, I seen some rappers, they said, oh, I paid $400 yep. to be on X show yep. for 15 minutes mm -hmm. for a local show. Mm -hmm. Like, a local, we'll call it local for dudes that want to become bigger and try and act like them. I'm like, holy fuck, I think go that, rent that goddamn venue yourself and 100%. just do that. 100%. I think that's a perception that's high. I think it, it's an ego issue that ties into perception it's i'm not going to gain anything from this for my 400 dollars spent yeah but what i am going to come away with is a picture or a video that i played this show yeah and then i'm gonna be able to post that and say i played with so and so yeah that person left there didn't know your name yeah you contributed 400 dollars to their tour so so what are you doing now you're you're booking for a new specific venue am i right rock, rock and roll heaven so <laughs> the story so uh I, I we did it as a trial, and um, it, the trial ended in uh, May. Sure. And I haven't talked to them, and they haven't talked to me. So, so business opportunity. There's no come, sourness. Come right, yeah, right, there's right. no no sourness. But you know, if if they if they want to continue, they can hit me up. But but what I I'll tell you this though, booking, <clears throat> booking has been way more interesting than it's ever been because these venues, normal venues, because I was, I had stuff where I was like, oh, I got a couple months open ahead of time. I'll do whatever. People are booking up into like, it was February and people said, oh yeah, we're booked for the whole year. Yeah. Local bands, not, not, not cover bands. Yeah. Just local art bands or whatever. And they don't want to play anywhere like how you're saying oversaturation yeah. which i agree on yeah, that yeah. but it's also it's like huh, well what the? it's a repetition thing yeah on, on the counter argument is the more you perform the more reps you get like anything else you're gonna get you're yeah. gonna you know sharpen your craft yeah so how how would that work and you don't have to get into you know specific splits but how does it work like the venue would say we want you to be responsible for these days each week or these days each month depends on the situation on is that how that works? yeah so it depends on the situation um, I'll tell you, I, I would love to go and find a, a, a venue. Yeah. I would love to book at another, uh, at, at, at a certain venue. There's this one venue that I, I, I need to go and talk to them again. It was a venue that I booked at before and I mentioned it a while back, um, when I was doing stuff with, with, uh, with Rock and Roll Heaven. But if I was to do that, it would be really good. Yeah. But the the other thing with it though is to also be where um, I don't know. Anyway, whatever doesn't matter. Um, in terms of splitting, it de it depends on what it is. Usually, what I say is this: I'm like, you don't charge me to go and book here. Don't charge me. Don't let me just take the money from the door. You guys go and take care of whatever else. That's how it was at, at things. I was Back, gonna ask how the compensation. Dude, worked. it used to be where, like, say, stamps. Sure. Stamps. Before we'll call it things changed. Myself, um, couple other people booked there. Um before certain companies in came in there. Yep. I'll say it like that. Now they're they're closed <clears throat> now, right? They are closed. Is anything in that space? Or nothing. Okay. Nothing now. It's just an empty building. Yeah, yeah. Um, when 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 I when I was booking there, didn't cost money to to go and rent. Yeah. We got ten percent of the bar. Nice. We could charge whatever whatever we wanted for a show. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, you know, if I don't have to go and do a, a from the get go amount of money yeah. that's a that's it's whatever that's where i'm like hey bands give you half because as a production company i'm trying to go and make something too right, i'm like you get half what do you whatever you bring in go go crazy yeah whatever i'll take care of you you know if you're bringing in a shit ton of people fuck i'll give you more i don't care yeah. you're you're doing good i want i want people to excel and that's the big thing when we were doing stuff at rock and roll heaven i was doing that too there was no 10 percent of the bar when I was doing stuff like um, the hip hop shows and whatever, I was even doing this before with like the MC Rampages. I think you might have played a couple of these, but it was like 
we did the 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 um the shuffle set where it was like a couple songs here, a couple songs there, whatever, and it I kept see. going going down, whatever, and then everybody rotated, which it kept people there to go and see all the acts because nobody wants to go and see go and go where they come in, people play, and then their crowd leaves. So we did it so people would stick around. The bars were happier. Everything was was awesome. Yeah. We can come back to that point. We can get back to a thing because, like, a good a good show these days is fifty people. A good show, we can do a lot more. We can do a lot more, and it all depends. There's every situation is different, but like, I don't know. I'm not saying like I'm 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 rallying the presidential campaign here. Be like. Pick me, pick me for all these venues. But like, you know what? Like, I can, with time, with time, we can go and do stuff. Because nobody knew about rock and roll heaven on on their end. Like, nobody knew where that place was, except for the people that they already bring. So you've, so, you've reached outside of, like, the local pocket yeah. to bring... You know, I don't know if bigger is a fair word, but a known, more regional known acts. Exactly. Yeah. Who are, who are some of the more notable acts you, you've worked with? Um, in booking in general? Yeah. I mean, fuck, I've, I booked uh, My Chemical Romance when they were a $100 wow. band. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's something to hang your hat yeah, on. Yeah. It, yeah, I booked them. I, I booked... I find, if, if I may real quick, I find working with artists is kind of like the stock market. you got to find, <clears> in, in our space anyway... You have to find that sweet spot where this stock is about to go up, but I can buy it low before that happens. Yeah. Or, or the, on the contrary, on the way down, they've hit their fame. They're on the retirement tour. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, they're in the legends uh, bracket now, not yeah. the active hottest bracket. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. What what, what, acts would, what other acts would you um, say? I've booked, I mean, I booked. Notably from Buffalo, I've booked Every Time I Die, I've booked Green Jelly, um, stuff like that. I, I used to book like all the ska and punk acts, yeah. all of them, Mustard Plug, The Toasters, you know, not, not the high up ones like Real Big Fish, but like, we'll call them like the, the next, sure. we'll call them the next. I did get offered bad manners before. I wish I, I wish I took that. That would have been. That would have been a, a and, whole. And how did, how does that work? They have an upfront fee you got to pay. Or yeah, you pay like a fraction upfront. It it all depends on per show, but it's usually sure. a guarantee. So um, I need to give you X for you to show up. Yeah, and then you get more once you play. So or it just varies. So the way that it usually goes, and this is this was the this is the why I started saying no, and I I was doing this for a long time. It still reigns supreme in the booking world. Um, on some, not all, not all, because I've booked stuff like Razcast Planet Asia's tour. And when I did Razcast Planet Asia, they asked for like, I don't remember what the fee was, but it was, it was something. But like, it was flat. Didn't yeah. have to pay um, anything after. If it's, if it's not too intrusive, what is a tour like that or a duo like that? What do they ask? If I remember right, I'm, I'm ballpark this. I don't know if it's thousands I, or if it's hundreds. I think it was about a grand. Okay. It was on a, like a weekday. And it's, and when you do that, it's like, give us a grand. We're there. And then you keep the rest or is it, we need more. It, 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 so usually how it works is say like, I want to book, say I want to book, um, you know, some, some act like, uh, I don't know, say like a, a $2,000 act. That's like a metal band or something, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Basically, they're like, all right, you have to pay $2,000. You're going to put down half the deposit up front. You do that, promote, promote, promote. Day of show, make sure you have everything in line. They're going to want probably their green M&Ms and shit too, which doesn't, It's that's an extra expense that you have to pay for. Yeah. So... Usually how it works is this is let's say you pay a thousand for the band and then there's a thousand and more expenses. Let's wow. just say that that that's was a the, lot, man. Yeah, let's just say that's that's venue, promotion, hospitality, whatever, extra. Yeah. Yeah. You know. The way that it worked is that um you had you get your promoter profit was you get 10% of that becomes promoter profit. So 
let's just put, let's let's call it a thousand dollars to make it e easy round okay. numbers. Let's say everything cost me a thousand dollars to book a show, right? The the allowed money that you're allowed to make is ten percent for your promoter profit, so you have potential to lose a thousand dollars, but only gain one hundred. Yeah. And then after that comes what's called back end. Yeah. Back end is where you, you give the, the artist, it's usually 85% and then the rest they get, you take 15%. Mm -hmm. So a, a $10 ticket, you're taking a $1.50 or whatever it is. I think it's $1.50. I mean, I suck at math. $1.50 and they get eight fifty per ticket if it was a $10 ticket. Yeah. So they're making that much more, but you're making that much more. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, is that what people were doing to get back because of the hospitality and all this and that, they were going to go and pad their expenses, go and say like, oh, there's a, this is how much more or whatever. Agents know that people do that on some things, but, you know, if it's too excru excruciating, then it's like, well, you know, there's that. Because people, the, the promoter wants to make some more money. So it's like, instead of it being like, oh, I'm going to only make $100, if I'm padding an extra $500 in expenses, then here's this. The game starts getting played. Oh, we want to see receipts. Of course, of course. And then it's like, oh, well, we want a merch cut now or whatever. I yeah. never took a merch cut. Fuck sure. that bullshit. Yeah, right, right. There's big, there's big talk right now in Buffalo. Like, I've, I've seen, yes. I've heard a story. I don't think they were local, but I, I've seen a story of an act who on stage during their set... Yeah. Basically said, this place is trying to take some more merch. Fuck this place. Yeah. Like on stage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's happening a lot of certain places now. Yeah. That where they're taking merch cuts. Yeah. And merch cuts are generally. You didn't it, help me design this shirt, print this shirt, carry this shirt here. Like, yeah. Why give you something? Yeah. yeah. Because because of the hospitality sure, and etc. It's already being paid for, right? Right. You know so. <clears throat> I would say uh, when, when you talked about the behind the scenes stuff, the most accommodating place I ever played was uh, Babeville. Okay. In Buffalo. So they got the main stage upstairs. Yep. Have you ever been there? I've never been there. I, well, no, I take that back. I, I was there before they had the bottom. Yes. The bottom part. So the upstairs is like major touring, like Nikki Glaser I seen perform comedy yeah. there, who was just on the ropes to yeah. Tom Brady and killed it. Ani DeFranco probably still does things. Exactly. things are, so she that, owns it. They so. own wedding yeah. venues up there, so it's big. You could fit probably, you know, 500 to 1,000 people up there. The basement, yeah. super cool. Um, really dressed up nice, um, but it had a backstage area. Most of these venues didn't have that. Right. Um, but it had a backstage area. The, the acts, we all had separate rooms with bathrooms attached to them. Yep. And I got there, and there was, you know, a bucket of beer, soda, waters on ice, little snacks laid out. Nice. That was really the only... Just, just for you guys, and, and too. And I didn't huh? ask for it, and each room had that. Yep. Um, so that was really cool. And it, um, usually, typically, you just mingle amongst the people before <clears> you come out. But, uh, yeah, that, that was that. Um, some people, some venues are just cool. Yeah, it was Other really ones cool are venue. just The sound, shit. the lighting, yeah. awesome, awesome. Um, in regards to shows, the most successful show I ever played... Um, I didn't play it. I organized this mm. with with. The, I don't want to take all the all the credit here either because I, I had a team. Um, 2015, I had Greenhouse Project. I had six seven artists on it. Um, we built a show called Hip Hop Woodstock. Mm. I had. Was that the one at that? It was a Legion Hall. Yes, kind of, dude. That that was a great show. Thank you. That Thank was you. a great show. So I wish I wish I played that. Show. Yeah, I wish you did too. I don't. I don't think we really knew each we, other. We did. We time. didn't know each yeah. other that much. Yeah. Thirty three <clears throat> X. Um, I ran from like noon to like two a.m. Yeah. One stage. Thirty three X. You were slinging beers behind the bar. It was, so I'm it getting was, there. Was How, great. Mark? The night ended. I had over a thousand dollars cash in hand. Yeah. yeah. So. And it worked for everybody. Yeah. Everybody, I stimulated the entire ecosystem. Yep. I rented this venue. <clears throat> now, important to know, under the premise of private party. Yep. I didn't tell them public show. Right. So I told them private yes. party. Yes, right? So that's the loophole, because otherwise you would have needed insurance, you would have yep. needed security. Private party and donation. Yes. So, legally, a no. <laughs> yeah. Successfully, financially, a yes. Yeah. Um, how I did this, 33X, one stage, ran from noon to two in the morning. 
I had 20 tickets for 20 bucks. I thought you had two stages. I had one. You had one? I had I one. Brought our own sound system because it wasn't okay. built for performance. Right. It was built for, you know, whatever. Right. Swingers. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I know you said you don't pay to play. It's going to sound like it is, but it wasn't. I remember there was something. 20 tickets yeah. for $20. Yep. Tickets are five dollars a pop. You sell twenty, you make eighty dollars a profit. You sell four, you break even. Yep. That was that's it. Yeah. But more so, I needed a guarantee, or not even a guarantee, some sort of coverage if you didn't show. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So, right. So that was that was more or less the answer. Because like <clears> I said, <throat> playing for that long, you had to be on time and ready to roll. You had to be, you know, you had yeah. to be a professional. And I couldn't, I with thirty three acts, I couldn't be telling people no. Right. When I told somebody else yes, and have the, somebody else get a no when you're potentially not going to show up. Right. If you give me 20 bucks, you know, it's next to nothing cost-wise. You can make it back, and it assures me that I'm at least covered for my time. Yep. So I was selling 15-minute slots for 20 bucks and 20 tickets. Then you weren't limited to 5 bucks. You want to sell them for 10? You want to sell them for 15? Knock yourself out. You yep. didn't have a price on there. But that's what, you know, the expectation was. Um, so I did that, and then the sooner you paid, you pick. I got 12. Right. I got 12 p.m. to 1.45 a.m., 15-minute blocks all the way through. Like, mm -hmm. I had, like, a, a spreadsheet. Yep. Here's what's available. Your 20 bucks gives you access. As soon as that hits me, be it cash or you send it, as soon as that hits me, you pick your slot, your name's on it, you're now booked. Yep. So that was why I did that. But but it was still for the artist. And then I kept 100% of the door. So if, if you needed more tickets, I would have got them to you. Or right. if you won 30 minutes instead of 15, it was 40 bucks, but double the tickets, double the, double tickets. the slot. Yeah. Yep. Yes, you could have made more. Um, I kept 100% of the door money, mm -hmm. so I made my money there. I was supposed to perform. Lou was supposed to perform. Like I said, with the with the schedule being that tight, we were running over. I just took myself off the bill. Right. Lou took himself off the bill, and that's how we made up when things were right. running a little behind. Yeah. No problem there. I hired two bartenders. I hired a doorman. I hired a DJ to DJ everybody set. Yep. Um, all of these people got paid, and then I went and bought 12, 30 packs of beer yep. at twenty bucks, and then it was two bucks a beer. Oh, the so, good old days. So yeah, man. But twenty dollars <laughs> for a case. Right. Yeah. Thirty beers times two, so I'm making sixty on every twenty yeah. times twelve. So yep. I made forty bucks twelve times over. Bartenders were keeping their tips plus getting paid. Doorman got paid, DJ yep. got paid. So I the whole economy, It was awesome. The that was a good time. Bought a pizza, you know, at the time, 13, 14 bucks, because yep. this was 2015. Yeah. Dollar 20. <laughs> but <Dude. you> know, <laughs> 13, 14 dollar pizza, yeah. two dollars a slice, you know, not a huge profit, but money to be made. Right. We bought hamburgers, hot dogs, cooked them ourselves on the grill, yep. sold those two bucks a pop. That was a nice day that yeah, it was that a beautiful too, day. So it was like and it, this shit wasn't like a beer now, five, six bucks. Yep. Two bucks can. Hot dog, two bucks. You know what I mean? Like yeah. The prices were fair. Everybody yep. got paid. And like I said, that night ended, I had $1,000 cash in my hand, split it with my partner. So we left there with 500 bucks. I mean, it was a it was a laborious day's work, but a $500 day for two of us, plus the artist got paid, all the staff got paid. Yeah. That is the as, as DIY as you can get, I think, is where the money's at. Yeah. It was that was a good time. Uh one one thing of uh this this might be back from uh from a different thing. You yeah. reminded me of another show that was like one of the best shows. Yeah. I did a I did a show over in um Elmira, New York at this thing called the six oh seven gathering. It was kinda like juggalo kind of sure. yeah. show yeah. that was going on. And um it was the I think it was the second one that they, they did it on. And it was here I, I come out and like I'm, I run around on stage, yeah, jumping, right. whatever, going nuts, whatever. Yeah. I'm screaming in the microphone over, like, it was like, they actually said, we were like, dude, you gotta, like, not jump because the stage is gonna break because you're gonna, <laughs> like, and this is like, you use giant logs to hold up the stage. It was huge. Like, it was just, it was super energetic. I, Everybody was losing their minds there. Awesome. It was really good. There was a lot of people. They, they bought a ton of merch, too. And it was just like, that was a solid show. That was a fun show. I've been in so. some shifty situations where I don't want to put any location or group of people on blast, so we'll just keep it generic. Oh, but yeah. I, 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 get played, it. I played a show, and a friend of mine played who's also an artist. We brought hype men. We brought some people with us. Mm -hmm. This crowd did not like that we had black friends and told, and told us so. Oh, and wow. We had to leave because it got like they 
suggested violence because we had black friends. Uh, and I'm talking probably 2015, 2016. So, and yeah, man, and that was in New York, not pro- probably 45 minute drive from here, but wow. did some shitty things. Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, you guys booked us knowing what we play. Like, <clears throat> you, what you, yeah. you expect this to be a, a white only? Potential for a fall ex- kind of thing? Uh, like, ex- you expect us to. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know how to, how to explain that's the way wild. Besides bad people, right? But it's it's a unique industry we're in where yeah. you do see all kinds of shady practices, yeah. all ranging from ranging from booking to yeah. You, I want to work with a promoter to help grow my socials or my plays, or and like everybody is. Yeah, especially now with the introduction of bots, you don't know what the fuck you're buying. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 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 But yeah, the the industry. I don't know if it. The, like you were saying, all the racial stuff. The racial stuff is it, it, at one point it was getting bad. Yeah, it's getting real bad. I don't know if it's gotten clearer now or not, but man, oh man, that was wild. It's it's, so, time, it's time for a top five. Top five. We're we're the top five Buffalo <clears throat> Bookers. You could go all time. Mark Miller. Is he the one seed? Mark Miller. <laughs> Mark Miller. Mark Miller. And Mark Miller. Wow. No, they're, I don't know. Like, they're, everybody is good in their own right. Um, but everybody is going to be angsty about something in some sort of way. Because I've been on the, the playing end of being in, being the act. Right. Then I've been the promoter. People, right. people, there's people that don't like me. Of course. I know that. Of course. I know that. Yeah, like, goes for, goes for anybody. you know, and the promoter is always the, the one to get blamed first. There's, there is some stuff recently that's gone on. That was like the angst of the musicians that we have in some of this. It's, it's wild. But no promoter is perfect. Okay. They're not perfect. But if, as long as that they're doing effort of certain things, some, some, some do. Some don't, but there's a lot of promoters that are doing good now as well that, you know, are, cause I'm doing, I'm doing different things. I'm booking like, I'll book some shows here and there, but like I'll, I'll book, uh, like Lil Con stuff like that too. You know, I know I see what is doing good and is not going to spend me, like cost me a shit ton of money versus like, am I going to put in a, a shit ton of money and then like, is my, you know, am I going to gamble this? Yeah. kind of thing yeah, yeah. but you know but if i'm booking like locals and trying to make them happen that's the big thing is i want to see locals become bigger and stronger first then be able to branch out we get some of the regionals over and we really start kicking yeah. um because then i can go and do like say hey i'll do the show trades do, do the show trade well they can meet people too go and do that they can get linked up and do do what they can but basically um I think that there's different stuff that people bring to the table, whether it be uh, venues, having the venues or other things. But I think, I think what we need, because there's a lot of promoters that are, we'll just call it old hat. I don't know what you want to call it. They've been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. There are certain people that I feel, I feel that a lot of these promoters who a lot of them used to be in bands um i I feel too or are in bands and i feel that like they lost their way of feeling of what it used to be like when it was of fairness to certain degrees and it's like that's just certain things it's not like everything and like i said i'm not perfect and I'm not trying to be like all like, oh my God, I'm a better promoter than anybody. Cause like yeah. it's, it's all different. You're not trying to, when you said you were the top one to five, you weren't trying to say that. Yeah. I was just, you know, but, <laughs> but, 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 but what you, you know why I say that? Cause I know the job that I can do of given the opportunity and, and the, we'll call it the perfect storm that it can go and beat. Bro, you, you make and sell board games. You brought one of them with you. I did. Tell, tell me. How you, what, what is Peacock Black and how do you play it? So, see this right here? This is, uh, this is the game. There you go. Fully Peacock. And yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and uh, it is, uh, so, 
like I said, I make board games and video games, and um, I'm doing some pretty big, um, some, some pretty big uh, conventions and things like that. But no one, I mean, we're we're talking post Me Too movement, by the way. So yeah. everybody. I never, I never connected that that Peacock was cock blocking. I just thought it was like moving around the block squares as oh, peacocks. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's it's basically you you have a flirt scale. I wish I had open one. Um, I just don't on me. You have a flirt scale. It doesn't show it on the back of them either. It just shows like shows the cards. You have a flirt scale, and um, you play cards to get up your flirt scale. But people are playing block cards, so they're insulting you and saying shit that knocks it down or you grow your feathers and you get feathers on your peacock um or they'll pluck your feathers to to remove yeah. them so it's it's a lot of back and forth you know I, um it can go in the same space as uno and shit like that okay but it's like um yeah it's crazy and then you have these ring pieces that you get all three pieces of the ring you throw it all down and you you win the game uh-huh. but it's got more like strategy than you know so just playing a regular uno um, cause there's other cards that do certain things, different effects, but, but it is, um, the fun factor of like a game is quick or you can play a, a game mode that's a little longer, like a tournament ty- type of feel. That's awesome, man. Good for you. I got, I got two questions left for you. Sure. And we're going to transition to a personal note. Awesome. Are you happy? Yeah, not unhappy. <laughs> Every, it's kind of like at the stage of my life, I'm like, There is one thing I can say. Things have gotten harder where I would think five years ago I wouldn't be in the position I am now. I would feel like I've got more done. But look at what we had going on. Mm-hmm. So it's rolling with the punches. And I, I like to think like I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah. So the, the thing you could ask. I think. Yeah, yeah. The biggest thing that I do... Because I make lists constantly. Me too. Me too. Constantly. I'm also, it, I'm also a physical paper list. I'm, I'm very hardly digital. I okay. like having it and writing it. I do sometimes yeah. on writing, then sometimes on the computer. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, sometimes I'll even speak notes into my yeah, phone yeah. or whatever. I do that when I, if I'm driving and I'm afraid I'm going to lose it, then I'll just quickly record it so I have it. I do that too. Yeah, if yeah. I'll record I'll record lyrics while I'm right, driving. Right, I'll exactly. be like, you know, rap <laughs> this, whatever. I'm like, hey, this is the idea for this. Then I'll, yeah. and whatever. Even if it's like a melody, I'll be like, but, 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 yeah. but, 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 yeah, been there with all those. Yeah. yeah, all that. So it's like, it's, that's supposed to sense that you're a smart human being, but also maybe it's an OCD human being. Who yeah. knows? You know, it's one of those. Yeah. But um, the thing is, is that like what I want to do is make sure I get things on that list done because you can keep adding and adding to the list. But if the list isn't keeping that grow and shrink, yeah. then it's a thing. So my, my, I, I try to set the goals. Like one of the goals was get this album out, get this new album out, yeah. do that. Now, last question for you here. So 15, 16 year old Mark looking at current Mark, is he, is he, is this everything you wanted to be, everything you wanted to do? Is he, is he happy looking at you saying we check these boxes? <sighs> I think young me, uh, it's it's weird because I look at reflect back of what what could have been before if I took this route or that route. Um, sure. I think I think sixteen uh, year old me is probably like, yo, that's pretty cool. And then I think the uh, another part would be like, you fat fuck, get on a treadmill. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's like, look at you. I think they're both. Yeah. Good voices to hear, right? Yeah, yeah. Funny and honest. Yeah, yeah no, I, sure. I think I think there's some things that'd be like, some things that would say like, well, where where did things go wrong? How can you fix it from now? Sure. And then there's the hey, you did some pretty kick ass shit. Yeah. That no one can say they did. I don't know. I don't know many to like. Touring acts out of Buffalo, right, or, or right. Uh, in, in general, yeah. say like, yeah, I just went and took a t- did a tour all the way to Billings, Montana, shot down through Yellowstone, 
Uh, yeah, went through Cheyenne, Wyoming, went down, came up, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, do you know yeah. many? Because I don't. Well, I know zero. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And we've lived yeah. a long time yeah. to be in that. And it's like, I, I don't... I'm not here to like make anybody envious or anything or right. whatever either. It's like, yeah, no, I don't get that can idea. you can you learn from me? You you probably can't. Can you? Can am I? Should I be an inspiration? I'm not trying to be, but it, the thing is, is like if I can if I can help, I'm happy to help. Yeah. So there's that. I um, I think uh to answer the question though, I don't know. I don't know what little me would say. Yeah. I, I would. I think little me would be like, "Yo, your fucking video game collection is balls awesome." <laughs> That's yeah. what I think. I'd be a little me. would be like, "Yo, I'm gonna fucking play that." And then they're like, "What do you mean you don't have time to fucking play?" That's what it would. That's what little me would say. There was one thing we didn't talk about. Yeah. Do you have any questions on this, by the way? Like any anything? I know what it is. But okay. It, if it's, I, I apologize. I should ask you first. Okay. Tell tell us. What you want to tell us All about right. that, yeah. So, MCMD, the music, I have a new album. And the new album is, there we go, now we're in frame. Everything's backwards anyway. There you go. But anyway, you know, but this right here, that is my album. That's my album. It's on that. Um, Why did I choose that? Because, one, it's cheap. Two... Um, I do a lot of nerdcore shows, and that's kind of like what's cool, what's happening right now, is doing stuff like that. The other thing is, I mean, record stores and stuff aren't aren't taking it in, but like I'm, you know, I'll do it, whatever. Like, I can fit music videos, everything up yeah. on here. I'm giving content. I just want to say my new record, my new record's so good. I, it's just, it's just so good. I got the old. Here's the other one. Here's the old one. It's good. This one's this one's crazy. It's ridiculous. So I got. Is, is I, that out now? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's out. And not nineteen tracks. Like nobody's making a nineteen yeah, track a album. album. Yeah. So like, and the thing is, I got another album coming out pretty soon. Um, that's the I I think that's the big thing that we should talk about. Is, yeah, the, awesome. I know this is like the, the big encompassing t um, t um, time of podcast, but like, you know what? Like, I think this is a, I think it's an important thing. We, you know, um, I have this album. I, I like, first there's the first strike album. It's a good album. I'm never going to say like, oh my God, this album is better than the last one. Cause then it's like, you discredit what you made. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, or, or like, you know, these, these these artists will be up on the radio and they'll be like, oh, you know, this this one's going to be better than the last one because, you know, we like that one, but whatever. And it's like, just to kind of pump up the next one, it's like, no, all my stuff is awesome. I yeah. don't care. I don't care. I think there's a naturally an evolution, right? You're growing as a person, project over project. This, this was wild. Yeah. This is wild. But it's, it's, there was a lot of things that happened in my that's life. That's what I was going to say. They timestamp periods of life, right? Oh, yeah. And, and your periods of life change. Seasons change, so they're they're reflection. Being in, I I was living in North Tonawanda, in an apartment on Oliver Street, doing gang vocals at three in the morning. I talk about it on this thing. <clears throat> doing it at three in the morning, where my grandmother was dying in the hospital. I'm doing gang vocals with. Somebody that I worked with and a couple of her friends, because I needed ladies to just go and yell on this, this chorus. And then a couple dudes or my friends, whatever, we, we were at, at my apartment, three in the morning, yelling on this chorus, getting it done so that way I have it done. Because I would go and visit my grandmother sure. back and forth yeah. and whatever. And it's like... <clears throat> fucking crazy because I did when I, I even say on the track here um and I want I want to just say something because we were talking about lyrical stuff I'm, I'm gonna say that I am one of the best unknown lyrical fucking lyricists in this city but no one will ever know unless they listen I do have to say that 
That's a good that's initiative a, too. Th that's the thing is like that it's might that might say person. like yo you know I'm not saying fuck anybody. Sure. I'm saying like no, but you should you should but, take that kind of pride. But in your dude music. like because like there's a lot of people they, they I I I feel I get overlooked and I say a lot of things like there's a lyric in here that because the the song is called Five Years in a Pit it talked about how I lived in that apartment what was going on my money declined this that whatever like the lyric in here. It was like, um, you know, 3 a.m. gang vocals, my grandmother's final opus, fucking record labels bump my studio time, poof, hocus pocus. Like, nice. whatever, right? Yeah. Like, but the thing is, like, you want to talk about a story. Like, there's stories of shit. Um, I remember the first time I showed somebody, like, what I was, what I was doing on this album, and it was, um, I want to say it was Mamadou, uh, uh, fucking Magadou, Mamadou Cargbo, yep. uh, uh, fucking, uh, Mad Dukes. yeah, Mad Dukes. And I remember I showed him and he was like, he was like, damn, he's like, who hurt you, dude? You're fucking <laughs> angry. He's yeah. like, cause like, I've heard that a couple it times. People, like something he'd say. Yeah. He's, he's like, it was like, he was like, he, people were like, oh my God, I'm fucking, I'm fucking pissed. And there's, there's some, there's some songs like I talk about like fuck pay to play. I talk about like how everybody's in these these circles of of what you know all these you know circles of, of of people and they just stay in their fucking circle and they don't expand. And I I remember Colin is like uh, <laughs> compared to a bukkake circle. <laughs> but but yeah, dude. But there's like all these like all these things. And it's like damn, like you know, lyrically, I'm gonna pick my audience of like. I'll pretend I didn't hear that as like the ABC rap. Like, you don't know a thing about hip hop. Just stick to your death metal, ska and punk rock. Okay, kind of easy. But then like, I'm I'm spitting like fucking ridiculous lyrics. Filled with content. With, with content. Sure, like, yeah. it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, you, you, you hear those songs? Yeah, it sounds like you want your flowers, man. Ah, uh, I'm just... Yeah, I just need a high five. I think it keeps the chip on the shoulder, though. It keeps the sword sharp because you want them. I so, think. so that's actually, I, you, you remember I said about that 3 a.m. gang vocals, that song, whatever? Yeah. I actually talk about that shit because when, when I was listening to, like, bigger acts, they would go and they'd be like, it's, I don't want to say it sounds like they get soft, but they run out of material. They run out of fight. It's, yeah, it's very common. Yeah. They run out of fight. And, it was, and I, could, I could almost see it in like certain well, things that Eminem did. It, it happens. Yeah, that's, that's a good example. Because <clears> you get to a point where you, you're so hungry, you're so hungry, you're so hungry. But then you get to a point where you achieve success. Yeah. And it's like, I don't there's have anything nothing. to work for. So in, the, in, that, in, that, in that song, I, I was like, um, the lyric goes... Um, um, I write to face the hate, to face the pain. I write to show myself a way of thanks. Without the rage, the struggle, my words are shit. The more I suffer, the more I benefit. So, wow. I'm like... You're aware of it. Yeah, like... I, I'm like, if I'm not... If I'm not struggling in some sort of way... Not, not all the time, because right, you want right. to be successful. Of course, of course. But if there's not a struggle, it's like you're not... You're not feeling that push... That pushes the, it's what everybody buddy needs. It could be anything. It'd be even in daily life. It doesn't matter if you're a you want to whole, open your own business. You want to do this. You want to have a podcast. You you know anything. Yeah. There's that push. Yeah. Because we're all we're all, at the end of the day we're eat sleeping shitting whatever. But we want to try and be the best that we can go and be. Yeah. And I um I know that from this like. When I when I listen to this album, like I I, I actually am not one of those people that just want to listen to my music just to listen to my music. But sometimes, like, I don't know, I've been listening to video game music and crap lately. I actually wanted to go through a couple certain certain musician catalogs lately is what I've been listening to, just like see their progression, just kind of like oh you know whatever. But but the thing is like when I listen to that, I'm like like yeah that that old record. I did good on that record. It was my first first yeah. thing doing just like hip hop whatever. But then, like, because I would, I would rap in Boss Tribal and, and shit, too. But, like, even still, like, e every song you're going to hear and everything I do is always different. So I'm doing, like, and I'm making all the beats and shit, too. So I do all that as well. And, you know, whatever. It's a big lift. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
when you when you when you get caught, no no, it's just near your foot. Oh, it's near your foot. That you will when we're when we're done. Yeah. You, we, you'll um you'll have to get a couple mops and towels of you know cream and, and wipe it off the walls after you hear that. Yeah. But you heard it here first. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Anyway, nice. Um, the thing is though, is that like you're gonna be like holy shit. And the thing is too is one one more thing is when it comes to lyrics, um, I was touching on it with collabs, is that I'll do collabs with people. I want to, when I do collabs with people, I, what I want to do is like, they'll go and they'll do the verses and whatever. And what I will purposely do, if I if I feel like I need to either match up with them if there's a certain way, or I'll try and write way fucking better than they do. Of course, yeah. Doing certain things. Because then I go to them and say, all right, you, I've, had, I've had rappers go and say, dude, I can't fucking compare to this. And I'm like, we'll write, we'll get you better. Write something better. Go from there first. We'll do that, sure. and they and they do, and they and and I, so I'm pushing people to do better because I don't want to go and just be like I'm going to drop this up on on this guy's thing. There it is, and they sound like ass, you know, like on them, like not not that not like not like they're trying to be, but like them. Yeah. I want them just to, to, to be better, yeah. and uh, and to be like they they come out in the end. They're like, holy fuck, we made a fucking badass yeah. track of here. Course. I do so it every time, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm confident in my skills. I'm not arrogant. I'm not arrogant at all. I'm just I I know where I stand in terms of what my powers are. Yeah. And you know I'm good in certain things. I suck in others. I mean you got but, you got to believe in yourself wholeheartedly <clears throat> more because if you don't, why would anybody yeah, else? Yeah. 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 So. Nice man. Yeah. Well, we'd circle back and we touch the music. Yeah. We'll move it back in. Yeah. It's good though. I mean, it's it's good to know. Yeah, it's good stuff it to know on that. That's so, what's important to you right now. Yeah. So, all right, brother. We'll wrap it up there then, all right? Sounds good to me. All right, man. Peace. Take care. <laughs>